Our toddler is almost officially potty trained. We're still working on that overnight part, but he's pretty much potty trained. So I wanna share with you what I wish I would have known before I started potty training, some tips and tricks that worked for us, as well as our overall potty training journey. I think the first important thing to start with is readiness of your child. That plays a huge factor in when you're going to start potty training. Can't really force potty training. And I don't want to say I learned that the hard way, but I think that was really a factor that made us more successful when it finally clicked for us. I originally started potty training our toddler when he was around 20 or 21 months old. I was pretty pregnant. Just for context and reference, if you're new here, I had our second baby right when our older one turned two so they're pretty much exactly two years apart and I really wanted to get the potty training taken care of before our second baby arrived then I wouldn't have two babies in diapers at the same time I'm sure you can understand that logistically it would be a lot easier if you could get your older one potty trained before a new baby arrives. And there's also the fact that the arrival of a new sibling is a big change in itself and you want to try and keep everything else as consistent as possible around delivery date, either before or after. So I felt like if I didn't get it done around the 2021 20, month mark, then I would have to wait much longer until after baby was born and he had adjusted to having a new sibling and all of that stuff. So I thought, you know what? I might as well give it a shot. And he was showing a lot of signs of readiness in terms of potty training and interest in mommy and daddy going to the bathroom. He even once said like poop, poop, poop and ran to the bathroom. So he was identifying when he was going to the bathroom. He would tell us if he was pooping. He would try and flush the toilet for us. A lot of that type of stuff. So he seemed pretty interested and I found a weekend where I wasn't doing anything and could dedicate my time to trying to commit to potty training him. I had heard a lot of success stories from friends and family members that had done the weekend intensive. There's the oh crap method. I know Big Little Feelings does a potty training course that they try and do it in, some of them vary between probably three to four days. We didn't have a long weekend, which is probably part of the reason this wasn't successful. It was pretty close to successful and I'll explain why. So the first day it was actually just me and our toddler. My husband was busy that day but we did a day of nudity basically. He didn't wear underwear, he didn't wear pants and that helped him identify when he was going potty and he picked up on it very quickly. We had like a first little half accident but he realized that he was going potty and needed to do the rest of it on the toilet very quickly and every single time he would at least like the majority of it <laughs> go on the potty there might have been like a little bit of an accident at first when he realized he was going potty and would run over to the little toilet and finish it there but i think it was a pretty successful first day so day two we just continued with that the methods that have the three or four day intensives really want you to just like stay at home, watch your kid like a hawk and really be there for them. And we didn't have plans day two, but ended up actually having plans. So we took him out of the house and he weirdly did very well there too. I was so nervous. So I put him in a pull up when we left. I didn't want him to pee in the car seat. I didn't want him to pee when we were out. And he actually did the same thing he did at home when he was naked. He would say pee 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 pee. And I would take him to the toilet when we were at home. And he did that in public. And we went in a public restroom. He sat on the toilet like I held him there and he peed there no problem. So I thought everything was going great. Our toddler is in daycare. So then the next day when Monday rolled around, we sent him to school in underwear. We talked to school about what was going on and let them know that he was actually doing a really great job at home. He would sometimes have accidents. Of course, we sent him with some extra underwear and pants and it just went downhill from there. He did not do it at all for them at daycare. It was not working. And I think a few things happened there. We didn't have the full three or four days to commit to it. So I don't think he was fully ready to go back to daycare and not have those Hawkeyes on him. And that's another thing is he was at a daycare or, you know, like a school where there's a bunch of other kids. The teachers aren't just watching him they're watching multiple people so they're not watching him for every little tick or something or constantly asking him do you have to go potty and then the last thing was i wasn't there he was really used to mommy being the one to be there for him during this 
potty training. So when I wasn't there, I think he probably wasn't making that connection. But when he went to daycare, I think this positive thing that we were experiencing over the weekend turned into more so of a negative thing and it felt really forced. And I didn't want there to be any, trauma is a big word, but I didn't want him to be traumatized by what was going on at school and feeling like they were forcing him to go to the bathroom if he didn't want to. We kind of just pumped the brakes and we sat in this space for quite a while. He had the potty at home and we would ask him every now and then. If he said no, we wouldn't push it. He actually consistently was going to the bathroom right before bath time. And I haven't heard this tip anywhere. We would put the potty right by the bathtub and take off his pants and take off his diaper or pull-ups right before the bath and turn on the water. And I think that triggered something in him. You know, when water runs, we have to go to the bathroom. It's kind of a natural reaction. And so every single time before he went to take a bath, he would go potty consistently. So we at least had him going potty once a day in the little potty, which felt like we were keeping up that skill. Probably when our toddler was around 26, 27 months old, he just one day said he wanted to wear underwear, didn't want to wear his pull up to school that day. And we had shown him the underwear that we bought and he just really wanted to wear underwear that week. And we were like, you know what? He knows how to use the potty. We've had success in the past. Like, let's just roll with it. And it was initiated by him. We told the daycare again, like here's five extra pairs of underwear. Here's a bunch of extra pairs of pants. If this is just not successful and he's having accident after accident after accident, then just feel free to put a pull up back on him. But he really wanted to wear underwear and we're gonna give it a try. So he came back that day, was completely dry, didn't have any accidents. He didn't have any accidents that night. The whole week didn't have any pee accidents. The poop was a different story. That took us a little bit longer, but ever since he said he wanted to wear underwear to school that day, he has essentially been potty trained with pee. And that just goes to show what I was mentioning before that it really matters when your child is ready to do it. And that is gonna be when they're most successful is when they're ready, when you're ready, you have all of the tools. I think the age that he was at when we first started, he was still a little bit young. You know, the older they are, some things get easier. So they might have more of an ability to pull down their pants on their own. They might be able to climb up if you have one of those potties that has a little step up to the toilet or sit down on a little potty seat that's on the ground on their own without help. But then I also think it gets a little bit difficult the older that they get because we potty trained around, like I said, 26, 27 months. We never got to that phase where they're much older. And I think when they get too old, they require a little bit more to get them to go. Whereas it's a really exciting thing when they're just a little bit younger. So there is this sweet spot and I know different articles and different methods have different opinions on what that sweet spot is. I think some things recommend, you know, you don't pass around 30 months and that if you do it before 30 months, then that's kind of where that sweet spot is. But it's probably dependent on your child specifically. And like I keep saying, the readiness signs. So let's talk about the last stages of potty training, which for us was going number two and nap time and overnight. So going number two, like I said, it took a little bit longer. We had more accidents in that route. I think it can be a really scary concept for a lot of kids. I have a friend whose daughter would ask to put on a diaper so she could go number two every time and she had been fully potty trained for, I don't even know, close to a year probably. So luckily we didn't deal with it for that long. It was probably a month maybe where we had like on and off battle with it. And the biggest issue we had was just teaching him that it takes some time. You have to sit there and be patient. So I've heard of a lot of people having like a sensory bin that they play with or a special toy or a book that they get to read while they are on the potty. I read books to him. I held his hands. We did all these things. And finally, again, it just clicked that it's not gonna be as instantaneous as going pee. It's gonna take a little bit of time. And we finally worked through it. And again, it just clicked. And when it clicks, it clicks. And with naps, we started doing pull-ups probably for the first like week or so. I think just because we were nervous, we found that as long as we had him go potty before he takes a nap, he wakes up dry from his naps. So we dropped the pull-ups after about a week. He has not been using pull-ups during naps and has been very successful with that as long as he goes to the bathroom before his nap. 
for nighttime. I think we're also ready to drop the pull-ups at night just because he is waking up dry as well. We have him go potty before he goes to bed. The only thing that would be kind of difficult, he has woken up once in the middle of the night and cried for us and said that he had to go to the bathroom, but he is in a big boy bed. He can get in and out, but he doesn't fully possess the skills to like get out on his own, go to the bathroom, pull his pants down, pee, pull his pants back up and get back into bed. So I think that's probably a factor in terms of when your child is ready to commit to not wearing pull-ups to bed. I've also heard that they don't possess the skills to hold their urine in overnight or when they're sleeping until the age of five. We are thinking about experimenting with it, but at this point he pretty much wakes up with dry pull-ups. So I'm feeling like we'll probably be successful if we make that switch. In terms of methods that we used, both when we tried the intensive version or the version that actually worked for us, we never really did a reward or sticker system or did crazy, crazy celebrations. I think that was something that a lot of times our parents did with us or people of my generation. And that method seems to not really be used anymore. I didn't want him to feel like every time he went to the bathroom, he deserved a treat or something like that. It is a really big deal and you want to celebrate with them and you want them to feel so proud of themselves when they go potty and you want to really hype that up. But a sticker chart and candy or whatever you would give them, I just didn't really find to be necessary. Again, having him be a little bit younger plays a role in that. If you have a three-year-old or a three and a half-year-old that isn't potty trained, they might be more resistive to it and maybe you have to implement those tactics or it feels like you have to implement those tactics. But with him being a little bit younger, we just didn't need to. And then we don't have to deal with, okay, like now you're potty trained. You don't get an M&M after every single time you go potty because we never introduced that. So we were just really affirming and positive when he would be successful. If he had an accident, we would never shame him for that. We would say like, oopsies, it's okay. Accidents happen. It was just an accident. Or, you know, next time let's make sure to let mommy know when you have to go potty. Or even if he would start going pee in his pants and then realize he was going pee and finish on the potty, you know, we would praise him for finishing going potty and say, you know, you did a really good job going on the potty, but let's try and get all of it in the potty, but really wouldn't make him feel bad if there was ever an accident or anything like that. Because again, you want it to be a positive experience. You don't want them to feel any shame associated with it or have it feel like a negative experience and kind of shut down the whole process. I mentioned how I was first nervous about taking him out in public when we tried originally potty training him and bringing your child outside of the house after you feel like, okay, I think we've mastered it. Let's venture out is nerve wracking because you're like, what if they go in the car or say they have to go when we're in the car or when we're out and about somewhere and can't really access a bathroom or any of those issues. We really found it to be helpful to just say, you know, every time before we leave the house, mommy goes potty, daddy goes potty. So you need to go potty too. Before we go to bed, you go potty. Before we take a nap, you go potty. There's just certain times when we go potty and every time before we leave the house, that's how it works. It's okay if you don't have to go, let's just sit down and try. And if you try and you don't go, totally fine. But if you do, great. So we didn't put a lot of pressure on it and we really put trust in him that if he didn't have to go, he didn't have to go. But it did give us a fair amount of time if he went to the bathroom before we left anywhere. And then we probably just were a little bit more proactive with asking him, do you have to go potty? Should we stop at the potty? Mommy's gonna go potty. Do you wanna come with me? I will say going to public restrooms is a whole nother ball game. Oh my gosh, the things that they touch in there and want to explore. I know some kids get a little bit fearful of it. So there's a few different tools that you can use. And I want to mention the tool that I use when we go to public restrooms as well as what we have at home. So for public restrooms, I got this little foldable potty here and it actually holds up really small and it just opens up like this. You can stick it on an adult sized toilet. It has little suctions so it doesn't fall off. And then it goes into a little carrying case, which is really nice. And this has worked really well for our child. It doesn't work for every kid because I know some kids are a little bit fearful of adult sized toilets. My nephews are. And so they carry a travel potty in the trunk of their car and they have little bags that they can put in it or you could just put like a grocery bag in it and they go that way. So that might be something that you need to use. 
when we are at home, we've found that there are different potties that we use. And you know what? We've purchased a few. A lot of these are very inexpensive, so you don't have to spend a lot of money. We you know, now have two kids. It's possible we might have more. So this potty training thing could go on for a while. And again, with kids' different preferences, we felt like, you know what? It's an investment. Let's do it. So we got one of these little potty seats, which was what we first started with to potty train. And he has done awesome with this. He can pretty much get on this on it. He can get on this on his own. Sometimes needs a little bit of help pulling his pants down, but he can get on this thing on his own. We just dump out the pee. And then once he was a little bit more successful with going number two, we were like, okay, this thing is gross to clean out if your child is gonna poop in there. So we got a seat that you can put on top of the toilet that has like a little step up to it, hoping that he would be able to climb up there. He still doesn't really use it to climb up there, but he enjoys that much more for going number two and the little potty on the ground for whenever he has to go pee. So he uses the combo of them. And then we realized that big thing with the step that attaches to the toilet we have downstairs. And if he's upstairs and he has to go number two, we wanted something else and something else that we can maybe bring when we're going to grandma and grandpa's house or a friend's house or something like that. So we grabbed one of these that fits on top of a toilet and we keep it upstairs. So if he needs to go poop when we're upstairs, we put this on one of the toilets. It's really easy to switch from bathroom to bathroom or like I said, take it on the go, take it to Nana's house or wherever you're going. So that is pretty much it. I know that every kid is going to be different. If you have a mind blowing potty trick that worked for you that you want to share with other moms or parents, leave it in the comments below. We can all kind of chat and share some of our experiences down there. If you're on this journey, I wish you luck. It is not as bad as you might think it is. Eventually it'll click. Don't be too stressed out about it. And I want to thank you so much for joining me today as together we make this motherhood journey sophisticated. Mm -hmm.